Hi everyone, Paul Exaster Scale Modeler. Uh, review of the Iwata Highline HP C8 airbrush for you today. Uh, I've wanted to try um, one of these Iwatas for quite some time. They cost £202.50 from air-craft.net. Uh, again, flawless service from Martin, next day delivery. Can't recommend him enough. Absolutely superb shop. Great guy. And I say always awesome service. Um, I want to try an iWatch that was a bit more comparatively priced to the Hardest Steam Back Infinities. It's a little bit dear, it's probably about £40 dearer, I know. Um, but I want to see how it compared in respect to the Infinity. I'm a big fan of the Infinity, as you know. And um, like I said, I've been interested quite some time to see how this compares. I've owned the Neo for iWatch, which is an okay airbrush for the money, and the iWatch Revolution. I wasn't that impressed with the Revolution. Um, it's a hundred pound air rush RRP around round about to that, and I thought it was more comparison with the sixty pound Harvesty Mac Ultra. So I sold that a while back. Um, wanted a fourth airbrush, yes, I know fourth um, for a new line of paints. I was testing because they're a bit finicky with the thinner they use with them. What have you? Sick of having gummed up airbrushes from different paints being used together. So I like to have specific airbrushes for different types of paint. I don't mean every type, but the certain types that I find need a specific airbrush. So I was looking at something a bit more quality. Didn't want to go the hardest steam back route again, so I looked at the Iwater. The Highline caught my eye, and it looked an awesome bit of kit. Now, if I read off a few little stats, so I always go look at my screen to read them off. It's gravity-fed double action, uh, 0.3 mil mm needle. Uh, it's a 9 mm paint cup, so it's a big paint cup. It's got the adjustable trigger tension, so you can just the tension on the trigger pull back. You've got the Mac valve, which is the micro air control valve, which is uh, Iwata, you know, painted it almost uh, for fine air pressure control. You've got solvent resistant Teflon seals, so you can use cellulose paint in there, no problem whatsoever. You've got the preset cutaway handle, which means you can get to the tensioner and the needle chuck as well by taking the back end off, which is very handy. Uh, it'll do hairline to 25mm spray. You get a five year, to, five year standard warranty and a 10 year extended UK warranty as well. So that's what you get for your money. Like I say, £202.50, so not a cheap airbrush by any means, but certainly not up there with the big hitters, the three, £400 customs and what have you buy a lot of, but not cheap at all. So if we have a quick look at the box, go over a camera. Attractive packaging, um, purple box, overview of the airbrush itself. It's a good looking airbrush. As you can see, quite a lot of the uh, cheaper Chinese airbrushes copy this style of airbrush. Obviously it's a Highline HPCH. On the side you've got its general usage, which is uh, food, cosmetic, body art, tanning, nail art applications, and that's it really, and obviously modelling as well. doesn't mention modelling there, which is a bit silly, but you've got, I suppose it's fine work on cars and what have you there, you could put it on. Uh, on the other side, nothing, and on the back you've got just a very quick overview of it. So, 10 centilitre uh, colour cup, 3 mil needle. You've got your gravity feed, dual action airbrush, uh, cutaway handle, preset handle, which is on the back, so that's your needle limiter on the back, which I'll go through in a minute, and your MAC valve, the micro air control valve on the front. So there you go, quick overview of it. Like I said, it's attractive packaging. Shame to not see it in one of uh, Iwata's older plastic cases, but I believe they've all changed over now. So it's, it's still a decent cardboard box, and probably like most people like me, I don't keep them in the boxes anyway, this goes in the drawer just in case I ever come to sell it or something later on down the line. Inside we've got the airbrush, we've got the typical Iwata spanner and a sample of Iwata's needle super loop. Uh, quickly go through, we've got an Iwata sticker which is quite a nice touch, that'll be stuck up somewhere in my workshop, so that's a nice little touch. You've got your quick overview of the airbrush, so it's a quick start guide, so basically attaching air, attaching your compressor, putting paint in, how to do basic airbrushing and what have you so if you want to read I'll hold it up you can pause it and have a little read I'll just come down to here I'm not going to read it all off but you can see there about basic airbrushing then on the back you've got cleaning uh, about using the preset and cutaway handles so the preset uh, knob on the back is preset handle limits how far back you back you can pull the trigger allowing you to set a specific line with each time you spray it's a very handy feature uh, both my infinities have got it, they come with it as standard as well. Uh, and then the cutaway handle reveals a needle chucking nut. Pull the needle chucking nut back and push trigger down and back when flushing cleaner through the airbrush. 
So I'm just having a quick read of that. The MAC valve, similar to airbrushes, are also equipped with the MAC valve, the micro air control valve. Turn the knob, adjust the airflow, PSI, for fine control of the paint. Basically what that means is rather than turn the pressure down on your compressor, which isn't the hardest thing in the world to do, but you know, you've know you got to bend down to do it or reach over to do it, you've got to look at the pressure gauge. You can do it with that valve. There's no pressure indicator on there, but you can tell by the paint flow how you go. You can adjust it, hence the micro adjustments. So. Not bad at all, a little bit of information there. There's not a full blown colour booklet, unfortunately, but there's not much to really say on these anyway. And we have a test sheet, which I'm assuming it's from the factory. So you can see you've got big, fine, wide spray right down to your precise needle spray as well. So that's a nice little touch to get that. Like I say, in the box, foam lined, you've got a sample of our water super lube for the needle and working parts, the needle chuck spanner, and the airbrush itself. If we get the airbrush out, we move everything out of the way a little bit and we just have a little look at the airbrush itself. Immediately it's got good heft, heft to it, it's got a good weight to it. Nice positive action on the air valve and the uh, the pull action of the paint is unbelievably smooth. That is super slick. Really nice, there's a lot of travel there as well, so a lot of play. Obviously you've got your needle restrict on the back so you pull that down and it stops how far back this will go literally to nothing so if you're doing fine lines rather than having to find a point every time you're doing it you can set that restrict there and it won't go any further back and shouldn't allow any thicker paint lines to be sprayed at all you've got the cutaway and the handle at the back which allows you to get the needle chuck so you can literally undo that to get to everything pull the needle out the front take it off and we'll take it off in a minute and I'll show you the inside as well uh, over here you've got the paint cup with lid I forgot about the lid it's a nice wide paint cup, I really do like that. Uh, it's got a nice tapered neck down the bottom, makes cleaning super, super easy because you can get right in there with a brush. Uh, like I say, you've got your MAC valve on the front, so this is the fine pressure control valve. You know, that's a hard steam back one. The micro air control valve, so you open it up for more paint, so sorry, more air, close it down for less air. I'll show you in a minute on the compressor working. Uh, and then you've got your air stem on there as well. The only thing I will be adding is I have a quick release for it so it connects to my quick release on my hose. doesn't come with a quick release unfortunately, it's probably the only downside to this out of the box. Uh, all the harders do, uh, that I'm aware of anyway. Uh, this one doesn't but I had a spare one anyway so it was no drama at all. Uh, you've got a 0.3mm needle at the front. It comes with Iwata's standard uh, needle tip. They are quite fiddly but this isn't As delicate as the likes of the Neo. I'm just going to pop it off. I'm just going to undo the needle. In fact, we'll take this off and I can show you this as well in a second. I'm just going to pull the needle back a bit so I don't damage it. Pop that down. So, as you can see, they are very, very small. I'm going to zoom in. Hopefully, I'm not going to drop it. A little bit of luck. <laughs> he says as he drops it and catches it, I knew I was going to drop it. I just get a state of my hand as well. I've been weathering today, so I'm covered in wash and it won't come off. Um, as you can see they are very small, it's a 0.3mm needle nozzle, but they are nowhere near as delicate as the ones the uh, the Neo is criticised for. They're a little bit fiddly to put on, but he says dropping it again. Um, this is part of the reasons why I'm a fan of the Harder Steam Beck, and obviously I'm looking at the camera trying to put this on, as you do. There we go, once you get it on you give it a tighten up. and. Don't go mental, don't be wrenching on it. Just enough so you can uh, be able to start push the needle back. Job done. Now, like I said before, you've got the, the pull tension adjustment, which is just there, so you can undo this to a certain extent, and this will loosen the, the tension on this, or you can tighten it up and increase the tension on there as well. So that's a nice touch, a lot of adjustability. I'm gonna put this crown back on the front windy today as you can hear knocking stuff over. So as you can see you've got the micro air valve on the front, the air stem, the trigger down and back. What I like about the trigger it's got this little raised section at the back that grips absolutely perfectly on your index finger. I like that it's a nice little touch, just a little kick back at the top. It's obviously grooved as well for grip which is also a nice touch. So it gives you plenty of hold and feel there, you're not going to slip off of it. Like I say, you've got your needle chuck and the adjustment there. I'm just going to adjust it back to roughly where I had it, which is about there. I'm going to pop this back on. 
I like to take it right round so this bar is that side so when my fingers rest on the side it doesn't interfere with anything at all and there we go, zoom is back out so there's a quick overview of the airbrush, you've got the colour cup lid as well which literally friction fits on the top like so spanner is the only tool you need to take it to bits and that's it really, so that's an overview of the airbrush, it looks a beautiful airbrush, it's very well finished, I'm assuming it's chromed or possibly nickel plated I'm going to say nickel to be honest but the finish is flawless, all I've got on there is my fingerprints all over it unfortunately but the action is very smooth, the, the pullback action for paint is super smooth and well impressed by that so really can't fault that at all, so what we'll do, we'll head over to the spray booth we'll have a little spray of it and we'll see how it performs Okay, over in the spray booth, um, we've got a piece of plastic card, which we're going to quickly prime, probably half of it or so, with some AK Interactive Primer. We'll then clean the airbrush, see how easy it cleans. We'll come back, we'll get a base colour down, see some lines, and see how she sprays overall. So, we've got my airline, which is quick release, hence why I've got the quick release on the airbrush. So, it literally clicks in place. Away we go, we get the old AK Primer, which is my primer of choice. You can hear I've got the any old Iron Man screaming in the background, which is always handy. So we've got a decent amount in there. We'll spray this. I'll try and keep the booth off if I can. We'll see how long we can keep it off for. And we're just gonna, as of all primer, get a light base coat down. And once we get it down, we start coming a bit thicker. Sprays beautifully, the action, the double action is absolutely smooth as silk, the pullback of the paint is absolutely fantastic, really really smooth. And like it says, the coverage, everything even got the needle fully back. I have now, I'm probably about 4 inches away. I'll be spraying it a little bit thicker than I normally would. Mainly due to speed because I want to get this finished. As you can see, it's quite wet. We cut to air. The beauty of a double action airbrush. As you can see, it all dry before you. So, overall, there's a wide spray pattern. Sprays beautifully, like I say. The double action. Is absolutely superb, very, very smooth. We'll leave that to one side to dry. Tip away any excess paint and a little bit of tissue. Tip away any excess paint and we'll clean it and see how well she cleans. So we've got UMP airbrush cleaner, generous amount in. We grab our brush, stand away, I clean every airbrush. With that wide tapered neck, it gets right in there, makes clean and an absolute breeze. It's easier than the harders, I'll give it that. Like I say, you get right in there with the bristles, give it a real good clean. As always, when I'm finished, I give it a backflow, which on the iWatch, you just plug the end. Like so, anything you backflow, never ever spray back through the airbrush, because if you've got any dry paint out the nozzle, you're going to spray that straight out and block your nozzle up again. Now this is my one criticism is you can't get right in there like you can with the pinch tip on the harders. But if you want to see you get a cotton bud in there, etc, etc. Now, you can see that. That is probably 80% clean. There's a little remnant of paint just down there on that needle. So we put a bit more cleaner in. Wipe our brush off. Get the brush right in that lovely wide tapered neck. Give it another good clean, another backflow, and it'll be done. So nice and simple to clean. With that wide tapered colour cup, it really does make getting in there so much easier. I'm just going to spray the remnants away in my in my pot. One last little blast. Any second now. There she goes. Quick wipe again, and we're going to be absolutely spotless. Give her a wipe all over the airbrush. And there you go. I cannot see any remnants of paint in there whatsoever. There's a little drop of cleaner. 
and that's about it. One criticism I've got, which I found just using it now, the back of this, the trigger, is rather sharp. So if you're holding it like I am everywhere, it's digging right in my finger. You can see the red mark. Cause that's the only criticism. But that's not where you operate the brush. This is where you operate the brush. You're only holding that if you're holding it weird like I am. Other than that, action's flawless. On a large area like that, covers it in no time at all. Probably does need a bit more primer. You can still see through the paint sample I did the other day underneath. But it does cover large areas rather well. So what we'll try now, I'm going to make a bit of room, put the lid back on the primer, we'll grab some Mr. Hobby Green, it's khaki green, add a little bit in, we'll spray it neat to begin with, like so, it's going to get any excess paint just dropped off, we've got the colour cup lid, which will pop on as well, the Mac valves are fully open, and let's see how it deals with neat paint. No problem at all there, if we just quickly spray a corner. As you can see it's not super smooth, it's rather speckling. But no problem dealing with the uh, unthin paint, just cut to air to dry it off. Obviously there are times when using unthin paint handy, whether it's a small area, especially if it's a white or what have you, to make sure you get the coverage. So, you know, while not a major, you know, drawback if it can't, but with a 0.3mm needle, it coats with unthin paint, no drama whatsoever. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a bit of thinner in, just to thinner down a bit, because we're a little bit speckled. I'm not going to put a massive amount in. In fact, I think that'll do us. So it's probably about 40% now, thinner to paint, give a little mix, put that to one side, and if you do as I do and you always put the paint in first, which is a real bad habit of mine, give it a little backflow. I put a bit of tissue on, that's habit with the harder with this, you just use your finger. So you're nicely mixed. Give it a test and hopefully that'll be a lot better. I'm going to put the booth on now because I'm going to be spraying this and it has got thinner in it so it does smell quite a bit. So what we'll do, we'll do the opposite corner so you can see the thin and unthin paint. That's going on a lot smoother now, a lot thinner. A lot less overspray, if you can see that. Now, obviously, you can play around with the ratios. Mr. Hobby is a little bit tricky to get right on the ratios to get less splatter or thinner and what have you, uh, demarcation lines. But for a test, that's fine with me. Now, I'm going to spray it. It's a 22 psi right now. I'm going to spray it and see what kind of lines we can get. We'll try and write my name first. We'll do a few squiggly lines over here. So you can imagine this is a camo pattern, got a bit of pre-shading. So that was pre-shading or camo pattern, you'd have no dramas there at all. I can write my name, no dramas as well. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to knock the pressure down on the Mac valve. We'll see what kind of thinner lines you can get at the top. As you can see, we can get a lot fainter lines, so it allows a lot more control. If anything, I think this could do with a little bit more thinner in there. Because we're getting a few splatters, but I'm not here to test the paint, I'm here to test the brush. But as you can see, we've got slightly thicker lines at the bottom, slightly thinner at the top, just because the 
lower air pressure. Allows finer control. Just come in and do some squiggles. As you can see, circles, figure of eight, no drama at all. Uh, it gives fantastic control. I'm just going to knock the boot off. No problem with control whatsoever. Using that Mac valve, you can tailor it to your own needs. I've just got a very similar one on my Harder Steam Beck. I've got the fine pressure control valve, so I'll review this uh, after the new show as a standalone review. We'll see how that compares to the Mac valve on this. This is awesome. I love the way that works, but you have to wait for that one. Uh, for a few more weeks, um, but like I say, you can go from a full on if I show us on here massive coverage right down. If I adjust it with it open, so that's fully open, you can hear how slow you can actually get it. Like I say, the paint's not necessarily thin enough. But the control that it allows is absolutely superb. You can still paint with it at low pressure. It still gives good coverage, but obviously not as good as when this is fully open. So, how does it compare to the Harders? Well, I've used the Harder Steam back for four years now. Four or so years, probably a bit more now actually. Uh, and I love them to bits. This is certainly on par with the Infinity. Uh, I can't argue with that at all. I'm just going to empty this paint out and clean this right so to you guys. And you can see then how it actually clears up a proper paint. Um, it's certainly up there with comparison with them because that was my main reason for getting this and for reviewing it to see how it compared with them. Um, I'm used to the Harder Steam Beck. It's what I've used for a long time. They're almost second nature for me. Um, but it's certainly on par with them. I'd say... The action of the actual airbrush is a lot smoother, especially that trigger action back and the valve pressure down. It's a lot, lot smoother. The Mac valve coming as standard is a nice feature because that fine pressure control valve on the Harvesting Basket is a £30 option to add. So that probably brings them uh, almost on par price wise. The only problem with the uh, Mac valve on this, and I'll show you in a second when I've cleaned it, is it's in a rather awkward position that if you spill paint, it literally travels right down into the valve itself, which isn't the best thing to have. But that's probably the only criticism of that. And then my overall general criticism of some of the eye waters is the fact of the crown over the needle. Now you can get a crown cap, um, but it still doesn't allow the same cleaning capability. There you go, one colour cup change, and we're nearly spotless. So I can't fault that. Um, it does allow cleaning of the needle, you could get a cotton bud in there if you wanted, but it's nowhere near as easy. Nowhere near as easy to clean as a harder steam back with the infinity pinch tip on. Um, I think that's almost faultless as a cleaning aid as such. Um, with the likes of this, you can see the paint in there now. So you're going to get there in there with a brush, so what I'll probably do is get the, the brush with a remnant of cleaner on there, give it a little swirl round, like so, that's got most of it, a bit of cleaner in, what I'll be tempted to do is probably just stick the bit of paper right up on it to get a bit of backflow in there, give it a wipe, and there we go, it's probably 80% clean now, so no problem at all. So, in comparison with the Harders, let me clean this. <laughs> like I say, it's on comparison with me, we get them both together. I do prefer the pinch tip on the Harder Steam Back, I think this allows for a lot easier cleaning um, than this. I know you can get the crown cap for it, but it's only a, a wavered line, so although you can get to need a lot easier, it's still not as precise as that. The map valve is great, it's standard, but like I say, where it is, if you dribble paint down here, it does end up in here, and it has happened to me. Uh, it actually happened on take one of this, I had to refilm it because I got paint dribble all in here, all in here and it made an absolute mess so I had to wipe it off but best thing is don't spill paint, it's easier said than done 
but that's one way around it. Um, I do love the trigger action on this. I think it's a lot smoother than the harders, uh, especially the pullback of paint. It's just ultra, ultra smooth. Really, really nice. The needle stop adjustment, again, nice touch on the back. That comes with the harders as well. And the cutaway, the same on the Infinity as well. Downside, no quick release, which is a bit of a shame. It only cost a few pounds. To put one in the box, you know, not going to cost them much, but they're my only criticism. So the crown cap, not as good as the harder. Mac valve in an awkward position. Um, and the fact that there's no quick release. My only downside to the airbrush, it performs faultlessly. As you've seen by the test card, we've got full coverage with primer, full coverage with unthin paint, full coverage with thin paint, nice fine lines, you know, I can write my name, I can do pre-shaded, squiggles, lines, turn the Mac valve down so the pressure's lower and we can get a lot more control, a lot thinner lines, a lot thinner paint, as you can see by that. You won't be able to see it, but it's gone down a lot more controllable. Obviously, if I muck about with the paint and got it thinned a bit better, it will go down better as well. But overall, you will not go wrong by an airbrush at all. Um, will it be replacing my harders? Uh, no, but it would be certainly working alongside with them. Um, that's for sure. It's a top-end airbrush, fantastic piece of kit. Uh, it's got pluses and pros and cons for both of them. Uh, if I had to pick, it would be a hard decision. It really would. If I had to choose, I think a couple more months used to this, uh, I'll grow to like it a lot more. I'm just so used to these, they're just second nature to me. Like I say, pros and cons on both. So. I'd say they were on par of each other. Um, this is a little bit more expensive, but it does come with the fine pressure control valve, the Mac valve, which you have to pay extra on this for, but then you've got to pay for the uh, the quick release as well. The other downside, but it's not a downside, is the colour cups aren't removable, so you can't alter the size. To me, I'm not bothered. That's the perfect size colour cup to me. And with that beautifully large tapered neck in there, there's no need to remove it whatsoever. Absolutely flawless. Brilliant. So there you go, not much to choose between them, to be honest. Um, if you bought either, you're getting an outstanding airbrush either way. Like I say, I'm going to own both, so I've got the best of both worlds. Um, sorry, one other thing I forgot as well. You've got this little uh, taper piece of metal here, which again allows a nice hold as well. That's your forefinger and your thumb grip it beautifully to hold. I did forget about that, my bad, I do apologise. So like I say, you choose either, you're not going to go wrong. Uh, these are going to work side by side with each other. Doing different tasks, maybe the same task from time to time, and maybe one will become the overall favourite. In a couple of months, again, exactly the same as with the compressor, I'll come back, we'll do an update on how I'm getting on with it, and we'll certainly do an update with this, and hopefully you'll see a lot of this in upcoming build videos of mine as well. So there you go, the iWatter Highline HP CH. Uh, Aircraft.net is where I got mine, and if you want to get one, go see Martin speak to him, he's a cracking guy. Some of the best prices you'll find on the net. An absolutely flawless, awesome service. So there you go. Recommended airbrush by me. Absolutely superb bit of kit. Beautiful looking airbrush as well. Highly recommended. So there you go. So if you like that review, guys. Hope it hasn't been too confused and haven't waffled on for too long like I always do. Um, if you like what you see, go and get yourself one. I know they're not cheap, but it's a top-end airbrush. And I know a few guys already own one as well. Because I've seen that already on the forum. Which is what made, made me buy one. Um, and there you go. So I'll catch you guys on the forum. Catch you next time. See you again.